In the past, it was man's common wish to get out of poverty, become wealthy, and lead a happy life. Last year, traveling across China, No Poverty Land witnessed numerous stories of success in overcoming poverty. While seeking economic development, we often cause damage to the environment. How are we going to make up for the harm done to nature? This year, off we go on the path of ecological restoration. Our first stop, we try to enter a forbidden zone of life. Some people say every step taken in Kakasili is the first footprint made by human beings since the birth of planet Earth. In the 1990s, when wild animal hunting was a craze, Kakasili was drenched in blood. It's because the wool of the Tibetan antelope was extremely valuable. The pouches wanted to get as much antelope skin as quickly as possible. Yes, it's the most deadly blow. He skins an antelope within 13 seconds. That's brutal. After seeing what happened, we virtually lost our sense of balance mentally. Crossing the Sea of Death. As recorded in history, the Kubuchi Desert was once covered in lush grass. Due to excessive cultivation, grass burning and grazing, the land became seriously degraded. From the moment you open your eyes in the morning until you sleep at night, the wind just keeps blowing. It takes the effort of three generations or more to restore it. Why wait till you lose it before you can cherish it? Last year we climbed the ladders of heaven and this year we climbed Tian Shan. Here's the greatest number of snow leopards in the world, Xijiang of China. But because of illegal hunting and damage done to the habitat, the numbers are falling dramatically. the Qinghai Tibet Highway, we're heading towards the base of the three rivers, the Yangji River, the Yellow River, and the Langchang River. Many outsiders would pick the eggs of the bar-headed goose. They say it's nourishing, it's game, so they sell it. And then we sailed along the Yangji River down south. city development and people's pension for eating wild-caught fish means fishermen resort to every means of catching them, including electricity, explosives, poisons and mesh nets. Very precious species like the Chinese paddlefish, since 2003, none of those have been seen again. No more? None. Growing up by the Yangtze River, we've watched how the river has changed. How could we bear to see such illegal fishing going on? There were about 20 of them surrounding us, some throwing cobblestones at our heads. Trying to cut us off from our gains? Then I told them that's illegal. He said, who are you? A non-government organization trying to interfere? Shambana National Nature Reserve. What happened last year shocked the whole country and set up a mass favor for an elephant chase. A herd of wild Asian elephants in Yunnan ran away from home. What happened? 
There are just about 300 wild elephants left in the country. We should do more to protect them. For the survival and completeness of the rainforest, the balance of the ecosystem, the Asian elephants play a crucial role. The elephants are very clever. They are full of feelings. These lions, elephants, tigers, and Tibetan antelopes live so far away. So why bother with their lives? Students at the school in Kunming of Yunnan seem to have found the answer. Massive hunting could lead to their extinction. After all, it's about money. Money can buy many things, but it can't buy the Earth's environment. We walked through villages that have experienced major ecological changes. City and towns surrounded by rubbish. In the end, we took a look underwater. You don't need to go far to see the coral. Some has been damaged already, bleached. The environment was? Really good back then, in 1990. In 1990? Yes, lots of coral reefs then, but they're gone forever. Can't see that again. The scientists have gone deeper into the sea to plant new corals they have cultivated, hoping they'll grow back again, bit by bit, saving the aquatic ecosystem. A healthy ecosystem is a valuable treasure. This year, our crew went from the furthest north to the furthest south of the country to hear the stories of those guarding the ecosystem and saving the lives in them. Season two for No Poverty Land is a five-man team again. We're carrying 20 pieces of luggage, traveling day and night. Our first stop, the Tibetan Plateau. It's my first time at the Tibetan Plateau. It's April and still very chilly, windy as well. In order for our team to get here from Hong Kong, we had to undergo centralized quarantine and home quarantine. And now that we're in Qinghai, we have to quarantine again. After all those setbacks, we finally made it to the world's highest plateau, the Tibetan Plateau. We're heading towards the so-called forbidden zone of life, the legendary Kakasili. Lots of hard work overcoming numerous obstacles, we managed to get an entry pass just to visit a group of people guarding this vast piece of land. We're here, finally! The Shonan Daje Protection Station. Oh, 
welcome. Big Brother Chill Pig, greetings to you. Oh, it's hard for you. Welcome to Kuku Sili. Thank you. Here's our team. Hello, it's hard for you. It's been hard for you coming all the way to 4,700 meters above sea level. I'm even more excited seeing you all. In the 1990s, there was a legend called Shonan Dajie. He gave his life for the protection of the precious Tibetan antelope. Next to me is his nephew, Chiu Pei Jia Si. Best wishes to you. I am Chiu Pei Jia Si. This way, please. This is my elder brother. Brother! Hu Chuo Sai Ren. Hello, brother Chai Ren. You do look alike. We look alike, right? Yes, your birth brothers. By the same parents. Heard so much about you and about your uncle, too. It's what we personally experienced. In the 1980s and 90s, Kirkusili experienced a major disaster. Numerous outsiders barged in with guns and killed the Tibetan antelopes from over a million antelopes. A massive killing left the air with just tens of thousands of species. The Tibetan antelopes are unique to the Tibetan plateau. As scientists have found, they have very special genes. At their fastest, they can run at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. Yet humans have limited knowledge about them. If they're gone, wild animals at the top of the food chain would go extinct without them as food. The balance of nature in the grasslands will be lost. Illegal hunting of Tibetan antelopes for trading of skin is an extremely brutal and selfish practice. Is for the most antelope skin? Yes, what do they resort to? The most deadly blow. Deadly? They drive over a switch on the lights. All of a sudden, they would just follow the lights and run. There were 100 antelopes in the herd. All 100 of them got killed in one single night. That time we caught one of the poachers. It was an old man over 60. He was using this knife. He skinned the antelope within 13 seconds. He would just cut from here, from here, and from here. And then he put the antelope's neck on the rack of a vehicle. Pool and the skin would be off. What happened was after doing that in winter, in summer, after taking off the skin of a mother antelope, the newborn babies would still be clinging onto the mother's body for milk. What kind of scene was that? All of us in the team, after seeing what happened, we virtually lost our sense of balance mentally. We felt so sick in the heart, all of a sudden, when they were all alive and well so lively a moment ago, and suddenly they are just corpses. It's snowing. It's the end of May right now. Kukusili at the end of May is still snowing. I lock and shoot. Look, I'm wearing seven layers of clothes with three heating pads and four pairs of trousers. The patrol car is ready. Will we get to see any Tibetan antelope today? Nephews of Shonan Daje, Chiu Pei and Chai Ren are both Kirkusili rangers hired by the government. You brothers are successors of your forefathers. What exactly do you do? How do you divide your work? He is director of the Wu Dao Liang Protection Station and I am director of the Zhuo Nai Lake Protection Station. We hardly patrol the areas together. We basically do the same things. Let's go for a check at the back. To stop the hunting or pouching, the most direct way is to go deep into the heart of Kirkusili on patrol. The successors of Shonan Dajie in the past decade or two have continued with the work of their predecessors. 
How often do you go on patrol? It's 365 days a year. We do that. Every day? Yes. Ke Ke Si Li stands at 4,800 meters above sea level. It's high up and cold, short of oxygen. Human beings can't survive here. The gentleman using the camera, he looks a bit pale. Are you okay? I'm all right. I can manage. He's too pale? He's a bit bluish. His lips are a bit purple. There's no signal in no man's land with no roads or people around, but it's 40 times the size of Hong Kong. The wetland, swamps, lakes and snow mountains just go on and on. They are endless. Chobe says on average, each ranger looks after an area of about the size of one Hong Kong. Are those antelopes? Tibetan antelopes. There are Tibetan antelopes up ahead, so many. They're all males. We can see the antelopes. Yes. We're so lucky. There are nine of them. It's really windy today. What is this place? It is so beautiful. This is Sin Sheng Lake. On the coldest day at Ke Ke Sili, it's minus 46 degrees. We basically have just two seasons here. Two seasons? One is the winter, and the other, almost winter. People say this is a forbidden zone of life. It's not fit for humans. It's where man cannot survive. But we can't say life is forbidden here, because this is heaven to some wild animals. Many animals, like the Tibetan antelopes, the wild yak, the ikas kiang, the brown bears, the foxes, wolves, the lynxes, the snow leopards. They're all here. In the 1980s and 90s, when wild animal hunting was at its peak, Kirkusili was covered with blood of these animals because the wool of the Tibetan antelope was extremely valuable. A Shatush Shaw can sell for 10,000 US dollars in the international market. Seeing the massive killing of these highland animals until they were almost extinct, the residents were outraged because in their eyes, the Tibetan antelopes are sacred. Besides, they are extremely important in the ecosystem on the plateau. Losing them means breaking the eco-chain. That could lead to dire consequences. So, in 1992, Shonan Dajie, the uncle of Chiron and Chou Pei, called together some fellow residents and formed a patrol team on their own to go after the pouches. Chiron was still in junior secondary school then. During their patrol, they run into various problems with fuel, living resources, and most importantly, their own safety. Even if they're sick, they can't go anywhere for help. The no man's land seems endless, and their uncle's manpower and resources were limited. Yet they still fight regardless of their own safety. In just a few years, they have caught many pouches and stopped the massive killings. During a patrol operation in 1994, Uncle Shonan Dajie bumped into a group of 18 pouches. They had skinned almost a thousand antelopes and were about to transport the skins. He came face to face with 18 poachers by the side of the lake. He was on his own. He was alone in front of over a dozen of them. He was shot a few times. He lost a lot of blood and died in the cold. Just like that? In the no man's land where there's not a soul in hundreds of square kilometers, how could you rescue yourself? It's my father who arrived at the scene. He told the family about how and when uncle was found. He was lying on his stomach aiming his gun. He froze and died in this posture. That's why every one of our team members will fire a gun. The hero, the path you have taken, none of us in the team will ever forget. So the brothers and the team of rangers carry on the responsibilities of the predecessors, risking their lives going into no man's land, guarding and patrolling day after day. 
Your uncle gave his life here. During the years of your work patrolling the place, have you come across very dangerous situations? The poachers we face are all ruthless, but they're not our biggest concern. Our greatest fear lies with nature, because human beings are so tiny in the face of nature. So tiny? During our patrol, say if we come across heavy snowfall blocking our way. When heavy snow blocks the path and they run out of resources, they can only count on drinking water from the ice on the ground. Kirkusili is close to 5,000 meters above sea level. The oxygen content is just 40% of that at sea level. Then there is the extreme weather. If you catch a cold, you can easily get pulmonary edema and syncope. The closest hospital is seven or eight hours drive. That's why many people have died before they could be rescued. On the day of filming, we are by the side of the lake. It's below zero degrees and oxygen is scarce. After hours in the wind, no matter how many layers of clothes we're wearing, there's no use. When we get back into the car, I suddenly feel very dizzy. The doctor told me afterwards I had acute hypothermia. Fortunately, Brother Chiupi quickly took me back to the protection station. After a few hours, my body temperature went back to normal. Risking their lives in the day and staying at over 4,000 meters above sea level, with a nighttime temperature that's below zero degrees and the only warmth coming from burning coal. At the protection station, there is no water, no electricity and no resources. They have to count on solar power and transporting water and resources from the food of the mountain. The toilets are outside in the cold. You have to pull everything up, including water, so forget about taking a bath. Bathing is a luxury. A real luxury, and I've decided I'll skip that today. I've made up my mind. Like you have a place for a bath, you have water for that. I'll try to blend in your ways of living. But we still have to go to the toilet. Can't hold that. You can. I don't want to catch a cold. We ended up sleeping together in their protection station, experiencing their tough way of life. Five of us slept in the living room, a simple setting, but we had a roof about our heads. After a day's adventure high up above sea level, everyone fell asleep quickly. The Tibetan antelope suffered in the 1990s were talking about generations of people's effort. Till now, the rangers are still working hard. We see a big herd of antelope moms over there. The great migration to have babies. We finally see something, they're coming this way. They're crossing the Qinghai Tibetan Highway. This scene is so touching. What Shonan Daja did created something like the butterfly effect, affecting many people's lives. These are volunteers from around the country. We all work here and live here. We're so close to the Equus Kiangs. These animals were what people had to risk their lives to protect. But today, we can see them just over a dozen meters across the road. 